finishing up our discussion of the Korg DW8000. It is, this is the last video of the series, the 10th video, but we're going to go out with a bang. I want to show everyone how I use the uh, Korg DW8000 and also the uh, controller panel that I've been using, how I use it inside of my uh, digital audio workstation. So there's a couple different ways I'm going to show you, and largely this is going to focus on Ableton and also Machine just because those are the two programs that uh, that I use. So folks out there who use Machine and Ableton will probably get the most out of this video, but I will go into the just general MIDI information, so maybe everybody will get something out of it. Uh, right here, you can see I have a track set up with some MIDI notes, um, and I, also, I have controller, the VST, which is controlling the Core DW8000, set up inside of a controller rack. And essentially, what you have to do with the controller VST, if you want to use or automate any of the parameters inside your DAW, you simply click Configure. It pulls up the actual pane of the controller, but you'll notice that the little Configure button is purple as well. And you have to click on some of the parameters you want to control. So let's say we want to control Cutoff, so Resonance. Let's do waveform 1, waveform 2, level maybe. Okay, so we picked 5. I'm going to X out of that so I can see what I'm doing and click configure. And then now, if I want to map some of these um, parameters to my controller knobs, all I do is hit map on instrument rack. Click the parameter, it puts a little bracket around it, click map, do that for all of my knobs or what Ableton calls macro controls. I've done it for all five, once I'm done I click map again, and now I can use my knobs, my macro knobs, which are being controlled by my Akai APC40, I can use those to control all the parameters inside of the synthesizer. You can see that it's actually controlling it live on the controller panel as well. And just to let you know, once you um, have selected these parameters inside of the controller instrument window, up here in your MIDI track information, when you're looking at all the parameters available to control, cutoff, resonance, waveform 1, waveform 2 level, all everything that I've designated is able to be automated up here in the window. So what does that look like? Uh, right now what I've got going on is a just a really simple uh, note progression that I have going through an arpeggiator. So let's listen to what it sounds like. <laughs> All right, so now that I have my um, resonance and cutoff and all these other controls set up, I can go through and automate them inside of Ableton. I can do that in a few different ways. If I click, oops, if I click record, make sure I don't have anything set to go. Okay, if I um, hit play and then hit record, I'm able to turn any knob I want to, and that will automatically start automating that parameter. So here's what I mean. I'm going to do it with a uh, cut. So you can see that me turning that knob caused this sort of level to start changing. What that did is uh, it changed the controller values as time went on and it also saved that data. So if I hit play again you can see it's automatically changing that parameter. And you can see it's doing the same live in the controller panel. I can do that for any parameter inside the synth. I can do it live with the knob or the macro knob there. Uh, I can also use my draw tool up here in the top right to control certain parameters. So let's say I want to do Set so cutoff, I want to do oscillator one waveform. Okay, hit play.
So you can see here that uh, values I entered in with my draw tool are changing the waveform of the synthesizer. I can also use my draw tool to draw in some more interesting things. So let's do this with oscillator 2 level. You know what, just for fun, I'm going to do this and just see how it sounds. So you can see all these knobs going crazy here. And you can see it changing the values inside the controller panel. So that's what's so powerful about programs like Ableton in conjunction with MIDI utilities like Controller. I'm able to change all sorts of different parameters inside the synthesizer just by mapping a few things and, um, and controlling it inside my sequencer. You can get really creative with this and make all kinds of uh, interesting sounds and progressions with this. I also want to show you something else that I've done, which is we're going to, well, for, uh, first off before we move on, let's say you do all this, you make all these uh, you know, changes to the sound, and you decide that I don't want to uh, have this anymore, you can choose to either clear the particular envelope you're on, so for me I just cleared out oscillator 2 level, or let's say I hate all, all everything I just did, you can click clear all envelopes, it's going to clear everything you did. So now, it sounds exactly the same as it did before. Okay, I want to show you, uh, kind of moving on, what I did to this version of controller here. So I'll pull this up. Let's load it. And what's going on is uh, in this track, this MIDI track, I've already set some things up. Now I notice I haven't mapped anything to my macro knobs. What I have done is I've gone through the entire controller panel, double-clicked or selected everything, and expanded out all the different parameters that can be expanded out. So this essentially is the synthesizer right here at the bottom that I'm scrolling. This is the Korg DW8000. Every parameter that can be controlled, I'm controlling digitally. And you can notice that when I um, view this instrument rack, every controller uh, parameter shows up here for me to be able to automate in my clip. In addition to that, what I've done to perhaps have a more um, interesting or controlling sound is this is being run actually by my machine controller. I've gone into Native Instruments controller editor and created a whole new template which has pages that control various waveforms. I've tried making it um, f for myself, I've tried making it as intuitive as possible kind of the progression of what I'm controlling. You know, I've got attack decay, breakpoint slope for my amp envelope, my filter, filter envelope, the modulation generator. Everything that we've talked about in the previous videos are all right here. Um, I did this so that I can control it uh, just hands-on. It maybe feels a little bit more like a physical synthesizer or you know, hand-controlled, knob-controlled synthesizer. I don't have to page through the different parameters inside of Ableton to control everything. I can just do it on the fly. Uh, if people are interested, I can try posting a link to this template. I, it's, I'm fairly new to making templates, so I'm sure it's going to go through a couple iterations while I get used to it. But I'll show you that um, once I, I have it set up, it's pretty hands-on to change things. So let's try this. This time I want to control something else. Let's say I want to control filter cutoff. I'm going back and forth between control and resonance. Thank you. 
I've changed all sorts of things inside the synth, and you can hear how much my changes have made the sounds different. <laughs> And again, if I want to undo that, I can clear all envelopes. And I'm essentially back where I started. So, many different options. I'm sure if you don't use Ableton or Machine yourself, uh, I'm sure your own DAW has similar uh, controls or procedures for uh, changing, controlling a physical synthesizer. It's really fun to mess around with. And my point in showing you all this, and really the point of the whole series of videos here, is to show how useful a synthesizer like this can be. You know, different companies make different synthesizers as time goes on, technology changes, maybe styles change, uh, what the market might be asking for changes. And so a, a synthesizer designed in the 1980s is not gonna really uh, necessarily be able to do everything that a synthesizer designed last year can do. However, I really have to applaud the, the DW8000 engineers for making a synthesizer that sounds this good and unique. And really what's most important, and I think uh, allowed for the most amount of longevity, is just how MIDI open it is. How, how you're able to really easily and simply, without very many bugs or problems, control this thing through MIDI. And because of that, this thing can really, I think, has legs. You can really use this in a lot of modern studio setups. Please leave uh, any questions or comments in the, co uh, in the comments field below. I definitely uh, want to help answer any questions you might have. And if you're using a similar setup and you're having issues with anything, let me know and I'll do my best to answer your questions. I do want to thank you for watching these videos and hope you found it useful. I'll be continuing to make synthesizer and music videos here on this channel. So uh, like it and subscribe if you want me to keep making these videos. Thank you again. Thanks again for watching.